In this video, we are discussing wrapper classes in Java. Now, what is a wrapper class? So, sometimes we want to convert the primitive data type, let it be int, car, long, double. So, these are the primitive data types. So, whenever you are converting this primitive data types to the class or the class to the primitive data types, then we are using this wrapper classes in our Java. So, whenever primitive data types will be converted to the respective classes, it is known as boxing and whenever the classes will be converted to the respective primitive data types, it will be known as unboxing. So, let us go for further discussion on this topic. So, what are the wrapper classes? Wrapper classes in Java is a mechanism that can convert primitive data types to the objects and objects to the primitive data types. That means, we are converting the primitive data types, let it be int, let it be char, let it be float, float. So, there is a primitive data type to the respective objects and from objects to the primitive data type. So, both side of convert conversions can take place in case of wrapper classes. The wrapper classes are like the integer, you see the i is capital for int, int is a primitive data type, character c capital for car, so car is a primitive data type, long you can find that l is capital for long, here l is in the lower case that is a primitive data type, etc. When a primitive data type is converted to the wrapper class object, then it is known as boxing and when the wrapper class object is converted to the primitive data type, it is known as unboxing. So, boxing and unboxing, these two terms are very important and related with the wrapper class operations. So, there are some basic functions are there in the wrapper classes. So, let me discuss something on them. So, xxx value, so here we have written this xxx, actually it will get replaced by so either int or say char card or say float, float. So, float value, int value, card value in this way. So, that is why in a generic way we have written xxx value function. So, these functions are used to get the values from the wrapper class objects. The xxx will be replaced by either int or float or card etc. Next we are having the to string. So, that means it is used to convert a variable value like integer or float to a string. So, in that was it is for the conversion to the string in this case. In case we, uh, that uh, another function is there, there is a parse xxx. You can find that this x is capital and other two x are written in the lower case later. So, parse xxx function. So, parse int, parse float. So, these are used to convert a string input to a primitive type like your int or float etc. Then we are having there are some other functions in the wrapper classes which will be discussed in the demonstration which is following next. Please watch the demonstration, they will be discussing our concept on this wrapper class using a Java code. In this demonstration, we shall discuss on the wrapper class. Within the class, that is the wrapper class here, we are defining one variable within the main function that is the int val is equal to 10. That means this val is one integer variable. int res, so we have defined one another in integer variable res res and which is uninitialized. Now, this particular val has been passed as the input argument to the integer constructor and integer here is nothing but one wrapper class. So, creating one integer type object using int. So, integer integer is equal to new integer val. So, in this way you can find that this val has been passed as the input argument to the constructor integer and it is actually helping it to define one object under the wrapper class integer here. So, res is equal to integer dot int, int value. That means, here this the value which is there within this integer integer wrapper class object will be assigned to this res and res is going to get printed. So, val was having the value 10 and this particular val has been wrapped within this wrapper class object that is the integer and from this integer we are trying to get the value now. So, the respective method is i init value. So, respective method is init value and that is uh, returning the respective value there uh, which is getting assigned onto the integer variable res and res is getting printed. So, let me go for the execution you can find that the, the value of res is 10 here. So, it has got printed up to this level. Next, 
integer my int is equal to 50 that means automatically it is converting to my int that means it is automatically this line is automatically converting is getting converted to the respective statement that is my int is equal to new integer 50 now system dot outer print ln if you print this my int that is the integer wrapper class object actually internally it is using my init dot init value that's that is the int value that is the respective method which you used in the earlier case also so if i go for the execution you can find that it is printing the value 50 here in the next one we are having this i123 is is in the type of string and it will be converted to this integer using integer dot parse int if you consider this parse int you can easily find that this parse int is uh, is under the public scope defined as static returns integer parse int is the name of the method which takes one string class object as input argument and throws the number format exception so as a result of that this integer dot parse int you can write directly because integer is the respective class name under which the parse int is one of the member method so as it is of the type static so instead of defining integer class object we can directly access this parse int using class name dot operator that is the integer dot parse int so it is just converting this string to the respective integer and the value of this integer is getting printed but here we are having pre-increment that means instead of printing 123 we are expecting that it will print 124 because here it is having the pre-increment not the post increment plus plus sign is appearing before this res variable so let us go for the outcome it is printing that the value of res after increasing is 124 next we are having this res is equal to integer dot parse int fe comma 16 so here we are passing one string here also we pass the string but here the default base it was considered as the decimal base that is a 10 but here we have mentioned explicitly that is the base will be 16 and that will be assigned to this res and then the res is getting printed so now we know that f uh, e so f means 15 and e means 14 so how to calculate this one it is very simple so we can consider this f e uh, express in the in, in the base 16 say i'm just writing this one in this way express in the base 16 which is nothing but that is a 15 into 16 to the power of 1 so 16 to the power of 1 this one and then we are having this one that is a e e stand is means actually this is my 14 14 into 16 to the power of 0 so 14 into 16 to the power of 0 so what will be the value the value will be uh, 16 into 15 that is 240 plus we are having this one as 14 so plus 14 we are having so f e so which is nothing but 254 so this is the value we are expecting let me check that what value we got earlier we got this 254 here so from here uh, we, are, we are getting this explanation okay next one long dot to binary string so long is one of the wrapper, wrapper class and this two binary string is one method and which is public static string to binary long i so it is it will take the long uh, variable as input argument and which returns a string as outcome and it is of the type static so it is of the type static uh, uh, method so that's why i can directly ac access this two binary string from this long class directly now here the value is 91 so let us express this 91 in terms of binary so let me write it here so the, we are having this 91 91 is nothing but 64 plus 27 so 27 means 16 plus 11 so that means 8 plus 3 that means 2 plus 1 so in this way I can easily express this 91 so it is 64 is present you can find here 32 is absent 16 is present 8 is present 4 is absent 2 is present and 1 is present so that should be the respective equivalent binary equivalent of 91 so let me check what outcome we got here you can find that we have got this one 1011011 1011011 yes so in this way the values have got printed 
So the binary of 91 can be obtained by long dot 2 binary string 91. So 91 is of the type of long which is being passed as the input argument to this uh, to binary string method and which is of the type of static. So that's why we can ac easily access it from the respective class name that is a long dot. Long dot 2 hex string. So 91 will be converted to the respective hexadecimal. So what is the outcome here we are getting here? And that is about 5b. Why 5b? Because we know that 5b means 5 into 16 to the power of 1. What is that? That is our 80 plus b. b stands for 11. So 80 plus 11. So that is 91. So really we are having this 91 has got expressed in terms of hexadecimal here. So the next one is that we are having this integer. We define this integer. Uh, one uh, that is an integer wrapper class object integer. So integer dot two string. So respective uh, integer value whatever is residing in this integer, it, uh, that is an integer class object wrapper class object will be assigned to this int string string object, and later the string object is getting printed. And here you see we pass this val while instantiating this integer wrapper class object integer. So if you print, we are going to get here ten here. So in this way, in this particular demonstration, we have explained that how to use our wrapper class objects in our Java code. Thanks for watching this video.